Hello everybody and welcome to Legacy's Journey where we're talking about leaving a legacy for your business. Of course, I'm your host Cameron Williams, owner of Kenley Consulting, where we focus on strategic financial growth for your marketing agency. And here today, now I got a special guest. Like I say every guest is special, but this one is super special because it's the wife. Like show them you, show them you. So that's how you know. So this is the wife, um, Ari. Tell, tell the people hello. Hi, everybody. How are you? Now, you know you got to speak louder. She's very hey. soft-spoken. <laughs> um, so, of course, we always talk about legacy, family. So, I figure, like, why? Oh, first off, wait. Let's do some shout-outs because, you know, maybe we can get some sponsorships. So, first and foremost, we are in beautiful Costa Rica. Costa Rica. At the Commitment Summit. You see it mm -hmm. all in the back. Um, hosted by our mastermind. And I think you guys have heard me talk about them. Um, and of course, there it's a family trip, it's a family conference. So what we wanted to do, um, I felt like it would be a great opportunity. Those same questions that we ask other business owners, let's have that conversation between somebody who knows me better than anybody else, you know, outside of maybe my mom, I guess. Well, no, at this point. I can't beat mama. Well, beat at mama. this point, she know me better than my mom. But <laughs> why not have the person that literally is helping me build my legacy, let's do a podcast, right? So, first off, Ari, right, tell them whatever you want to tell them for your intro. <laughs> okay. And we're going to end up doing a lot of laughing, so we sorry in advance because we got so many jokes. All right, what you want to tell the people? All right, hey, I'm Ari. I'm Cam's wife. I'm also the mother of all three of his children. Uh-oh. We've been married for almost 10 years, and it has been a honor and a privilege to see you grow over the oh, years. Oh, so sweet. She might make me sound good today, y'all. <laughs> all right, so let's jump on into it. So, um... I'm only going to say not how did you get started, but I will start. One of the questions we always ask is, what did your spouse say when you came up with the idea to start your company? So literally, of course, this is my spouse. So what did you say? Or tell them the story. Okay. Well, the story is I was nine months pregnant and Cameron oh, ended yeah. up losing his job, right? That's correct. Devastated. The wind was knocked out of both of us. Mm -hmm. He came home, like, expecting me to not love him anymore and all these things. And I'm like, sir, like, your value is not based on what you can produce. And I will continue to say that. Your value yep. is not based on yep. what you produce. I love yep. you for who you are. Okay. Um, so Thank one day you. when I was cleaning, it had been a couple of months, you know, where we were on food stamps and we had really hit rock bottom and we Facts. were like we went to college we never expected to be hey, hit like we this. got a wall full of degrees wall full of degrees like this one graduated early you know so um i was cleaning and I, i'm a person of faith just like him and so um, i was cleaning and the praying and just giving god praise and he spoke to me and was like um i'm blocking cameron from getting jobs because there are talents, gifts, and abilities in him that he won't tap into if he has a job. And so mm. I was like, well, dang, how am I supposed to say that to him? Cause <laughs> and when she said it, y'all, what we I gonna do? I was looking so stupid. Yeah. So, um, and I told him, I was like, babe, just because you got fired from that job, you know, because of the layoffs, yep. um, that doesn't mean that you don't have the skill set that you earned while you were there. You still have all your degrees. Yep. You still have all of the skills. You have the soft skills. You have the wisdom and the knowledge um, that you gained in the workforce. So you're still an accountant. Be an accountant. And his response was, who's going to hire me when I lost my job? I said, sir, who? how they going to know you lost your job? Like, be who you are. You yep. know, I said, yep. you have a lot to offer. And then I told him the part about the talents, gifts, and abilities. And what he said was, who I ain't got no talent, <laughs> skills, and ability. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, did, how long has it been? That. About five years? Five years is actually in July. So, so, like, in two more weeks, it'll be five years. Can so, you believe that? That's crazy. It's been a five our life, year. Because our life has really changed. Drastically. Like, I thought drastic. I was going to have to work, like, really hard. And I'll say this. It was difficult for me to not be in a position to help him when this happened because my natural inclination would be to be a good uh, teammate. Yep. The way I define that would be me working this super high level job. And so if anything pops off, I would be savior. I would be the one to catch him when he falls. But um, I, I am now getting to a point where I'm grateful that I wasn't able to do that because the way that he's grown is 
beyond what I could have done by being the savior, by helping him um, in the way that I wanted Look to help God. him. But thankfully, I was able to help him in the way he needed me to help him, yes, even Lord. when I wasn't aware of what his needs were. Praise so, Jesus. So, um, yeah, he has definitely grown over the past five years. He has surpassed his old salary multiple times over. And, and um, you, it's all because Ooh, of yes. God and I, trusting him. I, now, he did linger you know, being obedient to starting his business. I did. But what I'm what I'm most proud of is that he learned from from that. Yep. And he he overcame. Like he's not the type of guy like if something happens where we're in a tough spot, he's not the type to go out there like me, I went and I was delivering people's groceries. I'm like my babies are gonna have everything that they need. <laughs> if I gotta deliver somebody's groceries then it is what it is. I was nine months pregnant Shout talking out to about shit. uh what was I trying to do Uber? And my father-in-law was like, Ari, no, you finna have a baby. Like, <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> we got it. Um, but he, he may not be that type of person, but what he did do is use the skills that he had to make sure that we ate. It was grits. But, Three nights in a row. But he found a way to stretch $35 in a way. I, I, I wouldn't have been able to calculate that. Like I was like, I would have been people. like, this ain't enough, you know? <laughs> so um, he used his skills to take care of his family, and he is still doing that, and I am beyond proud of him. Oh, boy. We're not making no babies in Costa Rica, no, by the way. No, we done. That's we done. our homework. We're done. That's our homework. <laughs> All right. So, okay, so I think that's a real good one. So there's that. Now, I would normally ask people, like, what are some family things that, like we do to connect on our off days, which they've heard in other podcasts. I've talked about like we do pancakes mm-hmm. on the weekends, which you know that the kids love that. But I think since it's just me and you, like what are some things that you're finding are good connections for just me and you? Not necessarily us as a family, but just husband and well, wife. Well, first of all, Team No Kids has been a blessing, honey, because I didn't know I was so burnt out. Eight years straight with no real break from kids. Like, who is this new person evolving? So, in other words, you're saying, like, single, like, just, just mom and dad. Yeah, time. like, being, like, your dad would always say, you got to be husband and wife. Yep. Because the kids aren't always going to be there. Yeah. Um, so, just finding time to make those connections with you, going on new adventures, doing things that we haven't done before. Like Costa Rica. Yeah. Um, but when we didn't have any money, we still were intentional about um, making the evening part our time to spend together which we still do by the way yeah we call it boo time boo we time. got that from my dad mm-hmm. but you know once the kids are in the bed that's like our time to talk more about our day we got certain shows that we watch together right and then we got like our individual shows that we watch like when the other person may be busy or she may yeah. go to sleep first um mm-hmm. so we've kept that tradition we try to do date night at least once a month I mean, it's a little slim. But that one's a little, a little bit harder because, you know, you got to find a babysitter that you And I don't trust with. everybody with my children. So there's that. So that's part. That's partially my fault. <laughs> 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 yeah, because our parents are still super busy in their yeah. career. So it's not like they're waiting. Um, another question I would ask you then is, well, did you have any more to add to that, I guess? Well, I was going to say the thing about game night, but we know what happened with game night. <laughs> Do you want to tell them about game night? <laughs> so we used to like to play Uno, you know, or whatever. I still like to play Uno. Let me she clarify. Loses. Nah, nah, I don't lose all the time. But he was gonna put me on blast and see I don't play that. You ain't gonna put me on blast, period. <laughs> so I got mad and I threw the cards and then I locked him out the door. And so, yeah. So when I responded, so next I was triggered. I was not my best self in that moment. And so I will publicly apologize. Because <laughs> you know, a lot of y'all, especially state. if y'all my buddies, y'all were like, so we want to know who won the best out of 10 Uno. No, nah, but there was that one round where you, you boy, he said, it was his, boy. first of all, I dealt the cards. And before I could even get a turn, he Ada put up. all the cards on the table. And see, I'm the like, way I didn't do, even get a chance to play. Because the way we do Uno, right? We don't deal seven, we deal 10 cards. And then we had this one called Uno Wild. So the whole deck is wilds. So it's nothing but specialty cards. And so I had made this comment. She's up like 2 0, 3 0. And I came back. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you could technically tie it. I think I was like, it was like either 6 3 or it was 5 3. And she dealt the cards. 
and I had it was the perfect hand. I just bow, bow. And something bow. told me I should have took that hand, but I was like, no, I'm gonna be honest, you know. And then I was like, she didn't get a chance to play. So I, like, I should have took that hand. And you know what? That's when I learned game night may not be the best thing <laughs> for you, right? Um, okay, let's talk about now. I'm trying to stick to my questions that are okay. kind of the norm, but. I think we can kind of freestyle because it's us. Mm -hmm. What would you tell the wife of somebody who's either just starting a business, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're a year two or three and it's just now starting to pick up that momentum because that would have been you, right? You're the supporter in this example and you saw me staying up late and mm -hmm. doing all the stuff I was doing, which you can talk about all that as well. But what would be like your thing to encourage those people? Because we thought at the beginning being a stay-at-home mom was like this rarity. Yeah, I was the only person I knew who was doing that, and I, so I felt very insignificant. And um, then we got, we started getting around other business owners, like here at the Commitment yeah. Summit. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, your wife stays at home with the kids, your mm -hmm. wife stays at home with it. And it's like, oh, snap. So we done stumbled onto something that was really good. But tell them your piece, and like, how would you encourage, you know, that wife, or maybe it's the husband to, I don't know if you want to say support. What would you tell them? Well, I remember when we had gotten some furniture. I'm mm -hmm. going to use an example. Well, I'm just going to share the story. So I had gotten some furniture, and I was building it. And like I said, I'm a person of faith, so I'm building it or whatever. And there's these little small screws that go into uh, whatever I was building. I feel like it was a dresser or something. And the Lord just spoke to me in the small, still voice and was like, those small screws are significant. And so when he said that, it was he was really speaking to me like because I'm the small screw yeah he may be the face of the company he's the one in the forefront but the little bit that I add whether it be an encouragement here or there or whether it's keeping the children out of the way or making sure that he eats and drinks water or making won't. sure that um, we're providing some kind of experience or I for the kids or I plan something for him and myself like those small inputs are valuable and important and that's what helps the whole thing stand up you know what I mean like we're not the core like God is the core but we are significant so I would tell the person um, I would encourage them by saying that you are significant even if what you what you're doing is counterculture um, and not what you planned, like you're still significant. Well, why don't you tell them some ways you do contribute because like you said, maybe that person feels like, well, dang, I'm just a bump on the log. I'm not doing anything. I'm just saying words you've said in the mm -hmm. past. So like, how have you found ways to either help or maybe you found out maybe from me that, oh, what I did was valuable and I just didn't recognize that. Um, I think, um, it's very important. I feel like, number one, therapy. Everybody should get therapy, whether you think you're fine or she not. Because I can guarantee you. you it's something that ain't fine up in there. Something under the hood need to be fixed um, to help you function better, you know. Um, but I would say personal growth has really helped me to identify what I am contributing. Um, oh, because that's good. a lot say of that times. Back. Say that back. Personal, say personal it growth has helped me to identify what I am contributing. Okay. Because a lot of times I wasn't. I'll be like, oh, that don't count. Like me fixing his plate don't count, or me watching the kids and making sure that they're smart that don't count because Which, I'm not living the way, my dreams. By the way, she homeschools, mm -hmm. and all kids are like on track or above track, and she does not have a teaching degree. So that in and of itself. I mean, I got psychology and communications, no, communications and media. Masters. Yeah, so I use the skills hey, I got. Hey, on real quick. Bachelor's in psychology, master's, master's in communication, mm -hmm. and I graduated the year. COVID happened. But prior to that, the Lord was telling me, you need to homeschool your kids. And I was like, don't nobody want to do that. I want to have my career, period, you know? But, and so um, once I went to church one Sunday and um, the gentleman who came to speak, he was a guest speaker, a guest pastor at, I think, where were we at? North Point. And he oh, preached yeah, on yeah, yeah. Naaman. And in his message, he was talking about, like, he shared some of his personal story about how he was homeschooled and all this. And I felt like the man was talking directly to me. And if you don't know the story of Naaman, um, he was a very high-ranking official in his day. And he was struggling. It was a leprosy. Um, and he had that sickness. And so he went to Jesus asking for help. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Jesus told him to jump in the Jordan River seven times. And if you don't know, the Jordan River is like a nasty river. So if you're a high ranking official, what it looked like you jumping in some nasty water. But that was the way his healing was going to be available. So sometimes you got to get past what you think you want to do or, 
you know, trying to save face, you got to get past that and get your healing, you know? And so at that point I was like, dang, I'm thinking I'm too good to be a stay at home mom because I worked so hard to get degrees so that we wouldn't be starving and hungry or be homeless or struggle with the things that, you know, me and my mom struggled with when she was raising me as a single mom. And so I failed to realize that I was not a single mom, you know? So the things that my mom struggled with, I was able to break some of those uh, generational curses, you know, because I'm married to a partner who is, he's a provider, you know, he's not the provider, but he's our household provider. Like God uses him to provide for us. And so, um, like I said, that personal growth and development, accepting what God has called you to do, how he's called you to contribute, even if, even if it's not flashy, it's still significant. So. Yeah, and I mean, and she still helps out in the business, right? So, like, my logo. So, like, oh, by the way, let's take a sponsorship break. Yeah. So, the hat and the shirt, y'all see, this is from Height Swag. So, shout out to Johnny B Woo! and Joe. Y'all did a great job. Um, people love this. Of course, they got the hat. I don't know if y'all can see that. Mm-hmm. Y'all know it says Walk by Faith, I think, on both. Mm-hmm. So, they did that. And also, shout out to Go Box Studio, who is letting us come live from yes. Costa Rica. Yes. They got us set up, mm-hmm. and I hope y'all like this. I'm not saying it's going to be how it is going forward, <laughs> but uh, we thank them for letting us use their space. Mm-hmm. But back to your point, like, R is the creative one. I'm more of the analytical numbers person. Mm-hmm. She's my creative one, and I've always said she's like my HR experience person. So a lot of times with clients, I'll be like, all right, how do I say this? Or how do I position this to make this sound good? And because she understands that psychology, she used to always tell me, you need to either be like Chick-fil-A or you need to be like Apple, which is superior customer experience. Right. She's like, people, re- why do you go to Chick-fil-A? And you you tell them this, because this is what you tell me. You, you're like, can't, why you go to Chick-fil-A? I mean, because they make you feel like you're a valued customer. And if they make a mistake, they're already 10 steps ahead of you. By the time you make it through that long line, they already got a free gift card for you. You know, we're so sorry you had to wait. And I may be thinking, I'm just glad I got to the front, but you got ahead of me. You so know? now bring that to the business. So, so she was telling me. I mean, I don't remember what I said verbatim, but I mean, something along the lines of if you make a, a mistake, like your dad said, it's not about making a mistake it's about how you respond when you make the mistake right like are you on top of it do you fix it right away do you uh, make the person feel safe like yeah because this is the when let's say i find a mistake most of the time like 98 percent of the time if there's a mistake from something i was working on with a client right of course i'm the one who finds it but you know me just because of the way i'm wired i want everything to be perfect Mm -hmm. so i'm like oh my gosh all right i think i made the mistake how do i tell them how do i word it and she's the one that's literally like look first off take a breath and then i mean you can tell them you right here you gotta look at me i mean you can tell your experience because your experience of me may be different than what i may have well what she typically Mm -hmm. tells me is like okay first off did you fix it so let's start at the fact and celebrate that you found it and fixed it before it even got to the client. Mm. And then from there, she's like, okay. And then I'm like, well, how do I say it? Is this something you bring up? And she may say, well, sometimes you don't need to go into detail because they don't need to know the technical part. They don't care. You found it, did you fix it? Or just tell them the solution. She's like, think about it. When your stuff is messed up or you get a bad order or something, you don't care, oh, well, it was the guy that flipped the wrong burger. and it, Did you fix it? That's all you need to know. And sometimes I may overshare because I'm I want hey this is what we found and she like Cam they don't care about that and so because she understands psychology communications and is really good at marketing she's able to help me kind of steer so that customer experience piece stays really high so a lot of our feedback from clients they're like oh yeah Cameron does this this and this and in my head I'd be like you know because we're not robots right I even mm-hmm. tell my team. You're going to make a mistake. Everybody knows that. We just want to limit those, and we want to give such a good client experience. Let's say we did make a mistake. We got so much goodwill yeah. built up, it doesn't matter. More good than bad. And that's what she would always say, like, even with our kids, yeah. and I guess we should talk about them. Mm-hmm. Like, how was that on those nights where I do have to work late, which I don't have to do that too much anymore, thank God. But year two, one, beginning. two, and three? Yeah. Hey, your boy, what you say I used to stay up to? He would be up, like, Cameron is the type of person, like, he is a machine. If if there's such thing as, as, a, as a human machine, it's Cam. Like, I'm downstairs waiting for him to come out of our for room. For boo time. It's 5 in the morning. 
and he's still going and he's not tired. I'm like, sir, cut it off. You have to, you have to know when to stop because what you don't want to do is be in the point where you're going so hard that you just, your body lets you know you need to stop. You don't want that. Cause then it's being, you're being stopped by force. And I feel like that's how she helps me because literally when I'm not like, let's say like she dropped the kids off before we came here. Like there's no indicator for me to stop. I just work. Like she's the one who's like, you realize it's time to eat now. You see what I'm saying? So those are the things I would say that you really help bring that balance for me. Cause I'll just keep working. But like part of me stopping is like, uh, it's eight o'clock it's boot time or you know, mm -hmm. things like that. So I would say helping me to stay balanced has been really helpful. Just because like she told you, I just, I, you're gonna always, and that's why I'm so big even with my team or with our clients, like you can stop working. Cause at some point you're gonna keep finding stuff to fix. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep finding more work, work to do. Be there, huh? Oh, I'm gonna do these two things. You do that. Oh, mm -hmm. well I need to do this. So I, you're always gonna find something. Mm -hmm. And so Ari does a really good job of like, hey, I know you trying to kill it for your people, but it's time to rest. It'll be there for you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's one way it's helped. Um, I guess from the parenting standpoint, how do you feel me having a business has gone? I think in regards to children, it's all about being present to frame their experience. For example, um, there have been times where, like our kids know daddy's working, right? So there have been times where they may say a comment like, man, daddy's always working. Or daddy said he was going to play X, Y, and Z game with me, and he didn't. Which or, makes me feel so um, bad, by Daddy's the way. so busy. Like, that's, that's when roots begin to form. And so as a stay-at-home mom, you have an opportunity to kind of uproot things before they become a lifelong problem. Yeah. So instead of allowing them to continue in this narrative in their mind of, oh, daddy's too busy for me, because that's what it turns into. Daddy is too busy for me. And I'm going to stop you right there and say, daddy is making, a, making provision for us to have the life that you have, to make sure that you have the food on the table, you know, the new doll you want. If daddy wasn't working, you wouldn't be able to afford a, a $40 rainbow high doll, you know, or um, to be able to go to different states. Like our kids have been a, a lot of places and they're, all, they're very young, you know, so just reframing and shifting their perspective and playing those memories like we record memories on YouTube and like every now and then they'll be like, oh, mom, can we watch some of our memories? So I'm I'm causing them to rehearse the good times, you know, and the times that he yeah. has spent. <clears throat> with him with them when i was going through a five-year depression you know so well explain that so they don't just oh. you know the whole postpartum which i didn't learn this but there's something called postpartum mm -hmm. when you have a baby because your your uh, hormones are out of whack so well it wasn't just that it was also my life not going in the direction that i planned right because i was planning to either have a corporate, my job, my thing is I just wanted to be successful. So I was like, I'm open to that being in a corporate setting or with music. So I was just looking uh -oh, for- do you need to hit a note for him real quick? No, cause this is Legacy's journey. We talking about your legacy. Okay, I, but you part of it, but okay, <laughs> I feel it. And we, you know, we got 30 minutes, you know. <clears throat> yeah. But anyway. Shout out to Go Box Studio. Yep. Um, but anyway, where was I at? You were talking about how for the that beginning time, so we had already had Kendall by this point. Oh yeah, Cam was holding it down. Like I wasn't even coming out the room until like twelve. I was kind of sleeping and just there. I didn't have the emotional capacity to parent, which is why I think it's so valuable to go to therapy because once I was able to unload and unpack all of the traumas that I was that I had experienced. I have been free to evolve and to be emotionally present and experience the joy that children have to offer. Um, and and the, I think even value your role too. Yeah, and to value my role and to, to me the biggest part is just being emotionally present to actually experience what I have instead yeah. of living so far in the past to where I can't even see what I have. And I'm just, like, I literally would well, just... Well, you explained that with K.O. too. Yeah, like... Our newest son, which I told y'all we got a one-year-old. Mm -hmm, so like, you talk about that a lot now, too. Mm -hmm, which, how I tell can, them. Like, just... I used to hate, like, giving the kids a bath when they were babies and stuff. Like, to me, it just was another task. And I felt like they were an inconvenience to me reaching my dream or trying to... 
be happy. Like That's real, though. I mean, that's the core of it. I'm just be honest with you. And so now, since I've unpacked all of that old junk, now I'm able to fully experience, oh, wow. Like, this is, they're never going to be a baby again. Yeah. Yep, this is a sleepless night, but... I'm just excited that I get to experience my child as a baby. Yeah, he's keeping me up, but I love this little person that I created yeah, with versus my husband. You know, who is that? I guess what Callie? Like mentally, she's out was of gone. It. Like I was the one doing majority of the bath time mm-hmm. since we were homeschooling. Like I would get up homeschool till how like to read. yeah, I'd homeschool till like twelve, and then that's when she'd be up and be more active. Mm-hmm. So then I'd go do all the business stuff. Yeah. So over time, that shifted, of course, and so now she's able to enjoy. I can carry KO. more. I can handle more. My capacity has grown yeah. because I got rid of all the junk. Still working through things, but I'm saying I have significantly more space to handle um, the household stuff, mm-hmm. so that you're free to do to go after it. Go after your dream of yeah, leaving we a had, legacy. We had to co- have that conversation, like, hey. How were the responsibilities doled out, roles, et cetera? Mm-hmm. Because as the business grew, right, I was having to take on more and more, deal with more clients. So I'm like, well, I can't help as much. Mm-hmm. But I guess explain from your side, like as the other side of the team, how did, how did you, I don't know if it's worked through that or reconcile that I mean, in your I brain. I just didn't want to be the reason that you didn't go after it. Like, I feel like you've experienced a lot of personal growth yourself by doing something I you didn't so. think that you could do. Like. There was a time you were like, what talents, gifts, and abilities? And now you're encouraging people in the marketplace. Like, you're you're representing your faith in the marketplace. You know, Shout and I believe Jesus. that that's what God Jesus has Christ. called us to do is impact the Jesus world and be, <laughs> and be a solution <laughs> to the world. So yeah. if you're able to do that in the marketplace, in business, some, some of the people you encounter aren't going to come to church. They're not going to come hear me sing praise and worship. But they're going to encounter you. And because your light is shining, they, they're they seeing him. You know, even though you're not, you may not necessarily be preaching a five-point sermon or a series, but they see your life, you know? Oh, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> Wait. Okay, <It's>... fresh wind. <laughs> I guess right. the Lord was pleased with that comment, honey. <laughs> you caused the earth to respond. This is what happens when you're alive, okay? It's all good. By the yeah. way, wait. Hey, come come in real yeah, quick. Yeah, tell the people so who you we are. We keep shouting out Go Box Studio. So this is the owner, mm-hmm. Big Ken, right here. So we're thankful for him sharing we his are. space with us. Um, if y'all need something like this at your event, because, of course, we know plenty of marketers watch this, mm-hmm. this is who you need to get in contact with. We'll make sure to drop his contact info in the link for the podcast. But we just want to put a face to the name when we say yeah. shout out Go Box Studio. This is who we're talking is about. Appreciate it. Thank no problem. <laughs> So, um, I think a good thing to... I was just saying that reframing their their thought process on it... Yeah, the kids. And giving them perspective um, has really helped. Yeah, because I be feeling bad, right? Like, you want to try to make every single activity and special event. And I think one time you had to sit me down and say, like, look, mm-hmm. I know you mean well, but Cam, you're not going to make every single thing. Because, like, she'd be like, oh, I want to take them to the museum. And I'm like, no, 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 I want to go. And then she'd be like, when? And I'm looking at my calendar, and you used to just be like. We're never going to go waiting on you. Like, you got to do what you are, your role is, what God called you to do. Like, you got to do that. And just trust that um, if it's something major, then I'm going to let you know. That like, it's a major one that yeah, you need you to you got to be out. there. And I know that you will do that. You'll drop everything and do that. Right. And that's part of the reason why I married you, because I knew that you would be a good father, and I wanted my Uh-oh. kids to have a good Uh-oh. father. Remember you your homework, that. no babies. I'm not going to have no babies. I, I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. But, um, but, yeah, that reframing has really been helpful because they see – Oh, because like the human mind, you're going to forget the forgetting is real. Like sometimes you can paint a picture in your mind and believe it. And then when you look at the hard facts and the evidence and video footage of yourself, you're like, oh, snap. At the zoo and yeah. in San Diego then you're like, and oh, in snap. Dallas. What I thought wasn't true. Yeah. Because so, our kids typically, like people here know, they're like, where are the kids? Because typically when we go to these, I bring the whole crew. So like I'm known for bringing my kids with me just mm-hmm. because I want them to experience that and experience life mm-hmm. with us, right? And then we get to experience like we never went out the country when we were kids. Mm-mm. Like I think my I first went- time was last year. What you talking about? <laughs> At 31. 
Huh? Well, I think I went to the Bahamas with my grandma. Okay, but I well, don't you know was Bahamas traveling, baby. Count. I was at the house. Do the Bahamas count? Writing songs <laughs> in my room. <laughs> well, so right, so like um, going to we did San Diego mm-hmm. last year, Baltimore, DC, yeah, Dallas, uh, Orlando. Did you say uh, San Diego? Yeah. Okay. So like we try to bring them and Ohio, like teach them. Indiana. Yeah, we try to teach them like this is the real world. This is how you act. Mm-hmm. Oh, you see how we're able to go to the zoo? That's a byproduct of, of the hard work. Of the hard work. Like, now, Daddy couldn't afford this if I didn't work. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that doesn't excuse me making time for them because there's times in the middle of the day where they'll come in or when you take your break. I think you're being a little hard on yourself. Well, this is what I think, so that could be true. Mm-hmm. But, like, there are times when, like, my break time, so let's say I'm working and I work two or three hours straight, like, back-to-back calls and stuff like that Mm -hmm. then for my break i will go out there and interact with them because Mm -hmm. i know i mean they're my kids they love me i love them right Mm -hmm. so you try to do that and you try to make specific times like we talked about you have those things to connect and to anticipate and look forward to so Mm -hmm. like pancake day we even got mo's now on sundays Mm -hmm. which i don't know why i started that but (laughs) Those children. But they look forward to it. Like, they're going to remember that. Yeah. You know what I mean? My when, daddy take me to Moe's. When you make something a thing, people remember it. Remember. Yeah, just like when we go out of town to these different states for mm-hmm. these conferences. Um, when, oh, are we going to the zoo? I'm like, I can't even surprise y'all. Y'all already trying to be. But that's We're going good. to the museum. That's good that they know that. They know that even though it's a business event, my daddy's going to make time for me. Like, you want that to be a foundational thought process like no matter these are the things she tries to drill Mm -hmm. you know that okay daddy has to go handle business but he'll be back Mm -hmm. and i think that's important to work in tandem like that right Um, because she's able to see the little things that i may miss Mm -hmm. and then on the flip side i just try to prep them for the real world like Mm -hmm. sometimes when we take them out to eat and we try to like those things that she's teaching them with the homeschool like that's the perfect time to teach you about money Mm -hmm. i want to buy this doll Hey, this doll is forty dollars. You have forty dollars? No. So then, when I buy it, oh, okay. Dang, Daddy, you got a lot of money. This is this when Daddy working hard. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So. And that encourages them when they hit an obstacle when they're like trying to learn how to read or trying to learn multiplication. Yeah. Like, just because it's hard doesn't mean I can't do it. Right. Like they have that tenacity. Because you do because the affirmations with them. Right, but they also see you working hard. So I think that's the beauty of having um, a two-parent household where you can show your kids both sides of things. Like, I'm, I'm mass, I work really hard um, when it comes to, like, that internal thought process because for so long I was bound by a negative one. So I'm, I'm doing like heavy-duty work. I can't do it. Ooh, right. I'm going to keep trying my best. Yeah, on those belief I systems. I am smart. And, yeah, thought process. Because I had them saying a whole thing, like, every night. What is it? Like, I am... I, they have a whole list of affirmations, but like that's where I do most of my heavy lifting. Right. But you're right. Like you do the the real world experiences. Like you may say something like, "That's not your best," or "I get you tried," right? But in order to meet the standard, you have to come up. Like yeah, you, like you, when she was trying to, uh, she didn't want to do her writing one yeah, day. Yeah, she was like, I, I don't want to do that. Mind you, this girl can talk. She could talk, you know, and she can come up with stories. And so what I try to tell her is, like, you have a gift yeah. to speak. And if you can speak, you can write. Because what you say will last longer if it's in if it's in print, if it's in a book, you know. So I try Shout to encourage to John her. Maxwell. Absolutely. I try to encourage her that. Even though it's difficult, you know, right now it's difficult. If you keep doing it, it'll get easier. So continue working on that. And so I'm saying that from, like, the internal belief, her self-efficacy. And as the teacher. Right. And then he came in behind me, and I thought this was so masterful how God just structured that moment. Like, he came in behind me and demonstrated how um, to write a script for she's been talking about she want to make a YouTube channel to play dolls. Okay. There ain't nothing wrong with that. So but he showed her how to how to do it. So Which now involves So writing. now she's excited about writing cuz she sees how 
it connects with her interests in the real the real world. Yeah, because so, that day she was like, I just don't want to write. Mm -hmm. I just can't. I feel mommy. like it's I punishment. I'm like, and, girl. And I'm like, but Kendall, you have to write. I said, you want to know how daddy makes a lot of money? Because I know how to write. Right. So I started, I said, you know, why don't we do a script for your doll show? So we started writing and she's like, ooh, you write so fast. Ooh, you write so pretty, daddy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is why mom tries to keep getting you to write better mm -hmm. so that one day you too can write fast. One day too, yours can look pretty. Cause remember what I always tell you, if people can't read it, they don't understand how smart you are. Mm -hmm. And so then you could literally see the wheels turning in her mm -hmm. head and she's like, oh snap, okay. And so now she's like, oh, I want to write episode two. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the benefit of having both of us and working together in that aspect. Mm -hmm. And then we already talked about earlier, like even with the business side, like, see, hey, structure your, your, op your welcome to the team experience when you sign a client. What should they be experiencing? That's how I are. That's mm -hmm. not me. Because me, it, they pay, let's start working. She's like, no, 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 no. You got to give people an experience. Yeah. Why do they want to stay if you just gonna act like everybody else? Mm -hmm. And I think that's been huge for our growth and making people feel welcome. Um, yeah. Remembering like their birthday or I've the been holidays. On that, by I know, the way. but we're we're gonna get back on track. You know, like remembering the holidays. Like, cause some people Slipping. don't have family to go to or they may be at odds with their family so having someone and remember I mean to talk them to you about that did you know i was trying to upgrade their onboarding process like you mm -hmm. know well what we do so like when a client signs or it's their birthday or it's christmas we normally send them like a, a bag of cookies mm -hmm. and i was just like i want to send something a little bit more because i read this book called giftology so i'm like i want to go a little bit deeper mm -hmm. um so i think i found a vendor by the way that i'm gonna need you to approve okay because it's like a box but like one of it is like five different teas and candles. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't know if that would fit my people. Cause that mm -hmm. means I can't send a generic thing. Now I gotta start. Yeah, cause with scents, like everyone doesn't like the same scent. Yeah. You, you know, some people are self-conscious well, about I'm their size. You... you don't want to be asking they But start. that's why I said I need to bring you in on that. But anyway, um, all right, cool. So what else I guess is your experience in being a partner? Because yeah, your name may not be on like Kenley paperwork, but I think every spouse is always super influential on mm -hmm. whoever the business owner is so like do you have any more feedback well i guess comments on how you've learned to grow into whatever you feel your role is or things you've noticed or let me you think about that while i try to see what my questions were i mean i probably would just build upon what i've already said about growing to understand the value you bring as a spouse because i mean you're the main person in his ear Ooh. okay you know going. like when he's having a tough day or we have some kind of setback what i say in that moment will impact his decisions so there's a level of power there to understand your role yeah and the you influence. know and th that influence will steer the whole family so if I'm just rah, 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 beating him up, beating him up, he may crash. And if he crashed, the whole house crash. But if I'm mindful of what I say. Look at you protecting the investment. If I'm, if I'm mindful of what I say, and if I don't know what to say, sometimes just being there, you know, or praying, asking God, you know, just continue to keep him strong, lift the heaviness of the load so he can keep going step by step every day. You know, just doing those things um, and understanding your power as a mother. Like when I shifted the way I ate, the whole family shifted. You know what I mean? So you have influence over to affect the entire household. And if you're affecting the household, you're affecting the whole bloodline because the experience that your children Legacy. have, they will that will impact either in a good way or a bad way how they parent, you know, or how they yeah. view parenting. You know what I mean? So what you say, you're speaking either life or death. So just knowing that as a wife, because sometimes, especially if, you, if you've already had a hard day and then your spouse is having a hard day, sometimes you don't have it to build them up. But what you can do is be in the trenches together and just remember that two is better than one. That's what our godmother says all the time. Two is better than one because if one falls down, the other one can help, you know, and pick them up. So just being present and realizing the value of your influence. It may not be to the nations, but if you're raising amazing children who are world changers, they may impact nations, you know? So those seeds, we you may not see the outcome right now, but just knowing that you're playing the long game, like I'm gonna be strategic with what, I, what, what I'm putting in 
my my husband? What am I putting in my children? Like, if he's going to encourage someone, I don't want it to be where he's at a deficit because I'm just, eh, 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 you know, just <laughs> beating him down. You know, I want him to be able to pour from a full cup, not yes. one that I'm draining constantly. Ooh, okay, that's good. All right, so what do you, what would you hope that the kids, I guess, get from this journey that we're on? I would want them to not, you know, some people just want their. Because I guess it would be for both of us. Like, what would you hope they get from me? What would you hope they get from you? I don't necessarily have a, a goal for like individually what they get from us because we can't really control that, you know. Um, but what I would hope that they would be able to walk away saying is that they saw unity in the household and that uh, that caused them to feel secure in who they are as a person. I want them to live a life where their spirit is never broken. Like I want our kids to be so fortified in who they are in God and who they are. Like I don't want life to be able to shake them. Like if they experience difficulty, I want them to realize. So these are the values that you yeah, want to like, pass. I'll, I'll say some of the affirmations. Like I want those to be so embedded in their mind. Like we say them every day. I want it to be so embedded Tell in their the mind that when they experience stuff, it's second nature to know, uh, I could do this, you know? So tell them the affirmations. Like, okay. what do you, just do the basic one. I know the, the longer one. I mean, I got to say the whole thing, honey. Okay, well, say the whole thing, because maybe they want to start implementing this with their kids. Child, my mama didn't start saying, <laughs> saying these affirmations. <laughs> okay, um, I have them. I'll be like, all right, ladies, it's time to say our affirmations. Because you They'll know, because be like, the, yes, KL can talk, so <laughs> this is literally to the girls. So um, I'll be like, I am smart. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I can do anything I put my mind to. I can to. do anything I put my mind to. I am loved. To. I am loved. I am accepted. I am accepted. There's greatness in me. There's greatness in and me. And if I work hard. And if I work and hard. And I work smart. And I work smart. I can achieve my wildest dreams. I can achieve my wildest dreams. Everything about me matters. Everything about me matters. I am loved unconditionally. I am loved unconditionally. By my family. By my family. God. God. And myself. And myself. And there's nothing I can do. And there's nothing I can do. To stop myself. To stop myself. From being loved. From being in love. And I also added these last two. Oh, you added some. I added that's two all more. I, I added when two more because Callie needed this. She needed this. So I added it for both of them. For all three of them. Um, KO can't repeat yet, but I added. He be sitting there just looking like this. <laughs> I added, I'm valuable. I'm valuable. And um, I also added, I'm powerful. I'm pow. Oh, that's Callie's favorite. Yeah. I'm powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why did you make them say these affirmations? I made them say these affirmations because I wanted my shortcomings to be their strength. Like the area that I struggled and you know the most is belief in myself from a young age. Like that's always been my, my thorn. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I wanted and I come from a line of broken women. And so Yikes. I wanted our children since we had girls coming out the gate. I wanted them to be women who were unbroken. And I mean, I know everyone has a breaking point, but I wanted them to be so solidified in who they are, their identity, because most people struggle in that area. Yeah. I wanted them to be fortified. There's so many wavering opinions. There's so many things that will come, um, ideologies that'll come, that'll cause people to second guess who they are. And I wanted my children to be solid in who they are, period. So whether they hear something that's contrary to what I say or um, someone else, because I mean, arguments can be convincing. I, I just that's wanted them true. to be solid in their mind. Because if you're solid here, nobody could take, like you could take something away from me, but what's here you can't take. And so I just try to, I just want it to be so embedded that they unshakable. And I want them to be, you know, a force to be reckoned with and for them to be positive, um, role models for other people. I want them to be able to walk into an arena and shift the entire atmosphere and to be like forerunners, you know, and change the world for the better. So. All right, cool. So, and we'll wrap it up right here. So if you could look back to your high school self mm -hmm. or your fresh out of college self, now that you are at your current stage, what would you tell that version of you? Child, what would you tell high school? I would school tell art? me them affirmations. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, but I mean the thing is, like being like your present day are, yeah. you've experienced whatever you feel you've experienced now or overcome. Child, I would have to speak life to that daughter, cause honey, oh Jesus. Um, the thing with belief in self, um, it's it's a little tricky because you can't believe for the person. Like you can tell the person that's pretty good all right the there. things, but. Mm -hmm. If there's so much gunk 
in their heart and mind that has like really solidified their belief system about their themselves uh, it's really hard to break through that and it takes a chisel like somebody who's going to keep hammering it because if you tell someone something long enough eventually they'll believe it so I think it would just be a matter of her being myself at that point in life being surrounded with people who are speaking life because there was so much brokenness there that just saying something one time wouldn't suffice so just to be surrounded with safe people who can um pour into you and build you up okay that's what's up Mm -hmm. um all right well hopefully y'all got something from this of course if you're the the husband and you got you know a home manager (laughs) Uh, as some people like to call it. Um, I think this would be a great episode to share. Um, and then on the flip side, um, if, you, if you're if you the wife of said person, um, I hope you enjoyed the episode and got to see just a little bit of our story, mm-hmm. our journey, um, and leaving a legacy for our crew. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, she's part of my legacy, right? Like how I am is a reflection of her and vice versa. Vice versa yeah. um, so I've definitely tried to bring her along the journey with me because I mean like I could have came here by myself she probably wouldn't have liked no, it. No you but. couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is our second year here because it's the mm-hmm. second year of the conference and even just being here spending time like just us like we're learning that like you got to have just mom and well husband, husband and wife. Husband and wife. Baby. Mom I'm, and not, I'm not mommy right now. <laughs> so um, I'm super thankful for it. You know I love you. I love you, you too. You know you my right baby. Okay, I remember your homework. <laughs> your homework. No, it's your homework. It's our homework. Jesus. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we're just super thankful for this. Um, I'm thankful for, I mean, y'all don't understand. Like she said, they, those were some long nights. And she would literally wake up and be like, babe, it is four in the morning. It's time. Yeah. And now it's to the point where she, like, threatens. Like, I will come over there and turn the whole, I'll unplug all your stuff. I don't care if you hit save and I'll be like. I've had to kidnap him and take him to the movies one time. Like, he was he was working so nonstop, he wasn't even bathing one time. I was like, sir, you got to go take a shower. Like, was that the time I was sick? It was tax season. I think I was a little under the weather, too. Give the people some context. Stop. Well, they'd be like, oh, man, he nasty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, what happened was I didn't go to the gym. Normally, I go to the gym His at 5.30. His schedule was thrown off. Which is like my cutoff you time. You ain't got to tell your whole schedule. Your schedule was thrown off, and so you didn't bathe that day. And I said, sir. And she was like, wait, you ain't go to the gym? Did you take a shower? Mind you, it's like I didn't 11 have to or ask. 12. I, I had smelled something. Yeah. I smelled a little something. It was a big something. And I said, sir, you have to wash your butt. Because <laughs> you got that butt butt. <laughs> <laughs> that crack, but you got to run Sir. some wet with some soap back there. I'm gonna scrub a dub dub up in that tub. But, you know, that's that's what your spouse is supposed to do, right? Bring you back into reality. Keep that balance. You know, when you're doing good, pat you on the back. When you're not doing good, get your refocus. So mm-hmm. I just want to say I'm super thankful for you. I'm glad we we're able to do this in wonderful Costa Rica, Costa Rica at the Commitment Summit. Again, shout out to Go Box Studio for yeah. just giving us this time to be able to have this because we wanted to do this mm-hmm. like months ago. Right. But then life was life. Hey. Life was life. It was y'all. doing what it does. <laughs> it was trying to smack my face and I didn't like it. It didn't try. It did. It smacked both our face like pow pow. <laughs> but now we like um, pew. Pew. <laughs> And so uh, we're just thankful to be able to do this. Um, any last words you want to leave for the stay-at-home mom, the one that's supporting, um, the one that may be in the background, the one that's watching the kids? No, I feel like I've already um, completed that assignment, but I will just continue to say I am so proud of you. Oh, From boy. the first time we were, like, at the beginning of our dating uh experience 12 years ago uh, i told you back then that you were extraordinary and yes I, do y'all, so i think we talked about this but like i never planned on starting a business and r used to always tell me what you used to say like cam you i think you were going to school for accounting and i was like i get that but i said that don't really fit you you seem more like a business owner or something and i used to just laugh at he her. laughed in my face but where we at i prophesied that thing baby look at you but yeah you are 
extraordinary Thank as you. a human I'm being. I'm working on accepting compliments. Thank as you. a human being. I'm not just talking about a business owner. And I've told you before, you may be Superman to your, your clients. You come and save the day and help them to maximize their growth. But you definitely do that at home, too. And so I just really appreciate you for doing that for me personally. Uh -oh. Like I, I was telling you yesterday, I ain't going to cry because you know, oh, this, your this is coming from my heart. Remember but I your just, homework. <laughs> I just want you to know, like, you have made a tremendous impact on me. And you made an impact on me because there'll be some days I'll be like, oh, really? I don't care. I'm but through. you asked me about what I wanted to say. And that's fair. And that's so fair. I'm I mean, telling I, you what I want to say sorry. about you. You're right. And you, you have, you, you literally blow me away. I am just so proud of you, of how you have evolved. Burn it away, burn it away. <laughs> how you have evolved spiritually, like, like I may be in the background in terms of business, but when I'm up there singing praise and worship at church, you may be in. You're Shout in out the to background. Cross Church. Like at church, they know him as Ari's husband, you know. But I just like you, you. You well, are, I think that's because you, you modeled. Grace, you well, know? I think that's because you modeled for me, like with Kenley. Like I'm pretty much the one that's in the forefront, and Ari's kind of, you know, that excellent plus one. She knows how to interact and mingle with my people, so to speak. But at church, you know, at least when we went to this church, like Ari was the one that was in front. And at first, I was kind of like, "Oh, this is weird." But I, I looked at the example that she said, like, I can play the background, I can be cheerleader, I can support. I can record the video or yeah, yeah, rah, rah, rah. So I think, you know, you set that precedent for me to be able to also learn how to play the background, how to follow, and that it doesn't take anything away from me either. No, because you're brilliant, sir. You're amazing. Well, but I'm saying I, I was able to take that. And even like with my clients, like, ain't nobody going to say, hey, this is my CFO. You know what I'm saying? My clients get to just do their thing, and it, it's cool as long as you're making money. As long as you're thriving and doing what it is that you love to do, I'm cool with that. So I think you've even taught me how to how to do it with grace um, and confidence at the same time. So we could probably go on forever. We probably need to cut the episode short because <laughs> we'll be up here talking for another Tell hour. Tell me in the room how much you appreciate uh -uh, me, baby. Because you got homework. <laughs> Y'all, you got one Speak job. To my spirit and my body. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You got one job. I told Ari the first day we got here. Uh oh. I said, Ari, you got one job. Don't you get pregnant on this trip. And I haven't. And I won't. That's right. You will not. I will not. I speak that thing. Speak it in faith mm -hmm. and yep. in the natural. Mm -hmm. You will not. I, you will not. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway. All right, y'all. Again, we just want to give a big shout out to GoBox Studio. Thank yes. you for letting us use your space. To the Commitment Summit, that's JC, Karen, and mm. David. Thank Wonderful you for having people. us here. Thank you. Um, we love this experience. We're so thankful for the just the whole all-inclusive. It's been amazing. Y'all, this food. If you have not gotten out of the country, get your passport and make that a to-do list because it will mm -hmm. change your life, your perspective, the whole nine. Um, so with that being said, this is Legacy's Journey mm -hmm. um, with the wonderful Ari Williams, and we will talk to y'all later. Thank you for having me. See ya. Bye.